is home to all living organisms, from the minuscule to the massive. It is our home as well. But what about its shape? The earth is almost spherical in shape. We discovered the truth about the shape of the earth after many years of debates and experiments. For a long time, people believed that the earth is not round, but actually flat. And in some ways, it made sense. If you see from our own perspective, as a person living on it, the surface of the earth does seem flat. Some inquisitive people observed that there were a few contradictions to the fact that the earth was flat. For example, they observed a ship approaching the shore. First, they saw the mast, then the whole ship. It felt as though the ship was growing in size as it approached the shore. Well, if the earth were flat, why didn't we see the whole ship altogether? This observation can be explained only if we assume that earth has a curvature and that's why we see the mast first and then the whole ship. Another example could be when you approach a mountain. You see the peak first and as you move closer to the whole mountain, then it becomes visible. This can also be explained only by the curvature of the earth. Eratosthenes was an ancient Greek scientific writer and astronomer. Some sources claim that he was the first one to estimate the size of the earth and postulated that the shape of the earth to be round. How did he do that? Let's find out. So here is a map of Africa. On this, we have placed two sticks, one at the city of Alexandria and the other at the city of Sain, also known as Aswan. And here we have the sun. So sun's rays are falling on both the states and are able to produce shadows. One at Alexandria and the other one at sea. Now suppose at a certain point of time, the sun's rays are falling in such a way that there is no shadow at both the places or same length of shadow at both the places. That is perfectly understandable if Earth was flat. But how is it possible that there is no shadow at Sain and a substantial length of shadow at Alexandria? This arrangement is only possible if the surface of the Earth is curved. Not only that, greater the difference in the length of the shadows, more will be the curvature. Eratosthenes observed this difference in the length of shadows and calculated that there has to be a 7 degree difference in both the places to account for this amount of difference in shadow lengths. Now, what is meant by this 7 degrees of difference? Well, it means that if I extend the lines passing through these two places till the center of the earth, then they will intersect at an angle of 7 degrees. Eratosthenes also knew the distance between these two cities was approximately around 800 kilometers. So he used these two pieces of information and calculated the whole size of the earth. How? If the earth is round, it means it covers an angle of 360 degrees. If 7 degrees covers a distance of 800 kilometers, then how much distance will be covered by 360 degrees in total? 800 divided by 7 and multiplied by 360, which comes out to be 41,142 kilometers. Meaning, this would be the circumference of the Earth. By modern calculation, now we know that the circumference of Earth is 40,070 kilometers.
In 1519, Ferdinand Magellan proved through his voyages that the earth was indeed round. Magellan's circumvention around the globe proved beyond doubt that the earth was indeed round. Presently, from aerial photographs and also satellite images, it is beyond doubt that the earth is indeed a sphere. But the earth is not a perfect sphere. Earth is an oblate spheroid. This means it is spherical in shape but not perfectly round. It is slightly bulged at equator and is flat at the poles. Just to give you some numbers, Earth's equatorial diameter is around 12,756 kilometers, while its polar diameter is 12,712 kilometers. Thus, there's a difference of approximately 44 kilometers between the diameter drawn to the equator and to the poles.